So I've been doing some uh, quite a bit of research on the topic of deconstruction. And one of the books which that, is uh, what deconstruction, which is the idea. Now this is actually hard to define really. The idea is that uh, there are a number of Christians um, or people who are professing to be Christians that are taking their belief system and uh, dissecting it, breaking it down to its kind of fundamental parts. They're deconstructing it. And that's the term that really is relatively new, but the concept has been around since the beginning. Okay, so take a belief, whatever it may be, God's existence, resurrection, deity of Christ, and and just uh, start to question it and and take it down to its basic building blocks, essentially. So it's for deconstruction then is more than just breaking the elements of the faith into parts. I mean that's that is uh, yeah. systematic theology. Yeah. You know, you got theology about God, you've got about Christ, you got about man, you got a soteriology, yeah. salvation, you got end times and eschatology and all that. This is different. It's breaking the pieces down for the purposes of challenging their yeah. legitimacy. Would that's that be right. fair? Okay. That, I, I think that's a, that's a good way to put it, Greg. Um, it's not merely questioning, and this is something I've been spending a lot of time recently thinking about. What is the distinction between questioning doubting and deconstructing. What I find is that these terms are being used synonymously. And so, you know, you'll have uh, people in books like what I'm going to share from, uh, this is Before You Lose Your Mind. And it, it the subtitle is Deconstructing Bad Theology in the Church. And it's basically a bunch of progressive Christians that want you to deconstruct your faith so that you will reconstruct your faith into some kind of progressive theology. Okay. So beliefs like the exclusivity of Christ, Jesus is the only way, you got to get rid of it, deconstruct it. Your traditional view of sexuality, got to go. Uh, the idea that um, God uh, is violent in the Old Testament or pours out wrath and judgment, this kind of thing, got to go. The idea of hell, no, no, universalism. So they're, they're kind of making an appeal for progressive Christianity, but the way you get there is through deconstruction. So, I, I mean, I want to be fair to them. They, they, uh, they definitely advocate for asking questions, which I'm all for asking questions, but they're asking questions for a very specific purpose. Okay. Um, and, uh, and so I, I mentioned this, you know, maybe it was earlier today that the deconstructionist actually doesn't like the apologist. At least these deconstructionists don't because the apologist says, yes, ask your questions, and we would like to show you the answers. Some of these answers have been around for centuries, okay? These are like, there's nothing, there's not a new question out there that hasn't been answered over the last number of, of years, you know? Thomas Aquinas addressed like 10,000 questions, okay? So questions aren't new, but they don't want you to end up in the answers that I would give or Greg Kokel would give. They want you to end up somewhere else. So the deconstructionists, when you read through this, they don't like the apologists. Um, and in fact, they straw man the apologists. I mean, at one point, this guy's talking about his one, one author in the book, because it's a, it's a book full of um, different chapters by different authors. And the one author, he, he references an apologist, and he says, the apologist took me to the book of Job and said, who are you? To, ant to talk back to God. Like that was the apologist response. I'm thinking, <laughs> give me a break. I don't know a single apologist, and I track with a few of them, you know, who would tell someone who asked a question, who are you to t talk back to God? That's not, yeah. our, that's not where we go, you know? Yeah. So um, anyways, I'm reading through this book and, and my wife knows when I'm reading something that I don't agree with. I mean, and we should all do this. <laughs> we should read stuff we agree with but we should also read stuff we don't agree with um, just so we understand the other side. And man, it puts me in a bad mood. Like there are times I'll read for an hour and have to get up and walk my dog, you know, because I am just fuming. And Greg, you're going to see what I'm talking about. Kick, kick your dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I can't do that. My dog is eight pounds and I could, yeah. Yeah, I'll hurt something if you did yeah. that. By the way, let me interject something here that I heard from you that I think is a good... Um, offers uh, a, a, a kind of an accurate way of looking what's going at what's going on with deconstruction because asking taking the pieces of Christianity 
Mm -hmm. and asking questions about their legitimacy is not something that bothers us. No. And every Christian has to do that with certain aspects of their convictions. Mm -hmm. In fact, everybody has to do that. Who is it that said the unexamined faith is not worth holding? Yeah. Um, and he wasn't, I think that was Socrates or somebody like that, or, or the unexamined beliefs Life. are not worth yeah. holding, something yeah. to that effect. So, But um, you made the distinction between people who are looking for answers and people who are looking for exits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a great way to put it. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to use it sometime in a book, and I'll probably have to footnote you, but it's still Perfect. very nicely put, because there is a difference between those who are experiencing doubts and are wanting to have the doubts resolved with good answers. Yeah. Between them, the difference, and those who are encouraged to doubt in order to get rid of beliefs that mm -hmm. the that individual doesn't like and agree with yeah and that's yeah. why you said over and over oh this thing get rid of that oh that no that's got to go no this because this doesn't comport with something else mm -hmm. and uh what we are trying to do is take the classical view which is biblically taught and then give reasons why you ought to trust it yeah. But they're trying to do is give you a different theology mm -hmm. and telling you to abandon the classic view. But my question is going to be, why? Mm -hmm. Why should I believe your version of the truth rather than Paul's or yeah. Jesus' version of the truth? Because that's really what's being offered here. Yeah. Leave that. Adopt this. Why? This is our second Columbo question. Why? Why? How yeah. did you come to the conclusion that this is a wrong view, the one that classical Christianity teaches, and mm -hmm. yours is the right view? Yeah. So, um, I mean, there's so much we could talk about when it comes to this issue. I've been making tons of notes. Um, one thing that relates to this idea of um, questions seeking um, answers versus questions seeking exits is the idea of see you know our, our next uh reality conference is the theme is going to be about seeking seek and you shall find that's like mm -hmm. next season you know and we're going to talk about deconstruction we're going to talk about doubt that kind of thing mm -hmm. and what i did a survey of the the new testament um a couple of weeks ago and just looked at every case where the word seek was used i was just curious and and what i found was there's those classic texts about seek and you will find, okay? And Jesus, Jesus says that. There is Acts 17, you know, God's not far from any of us. You know, if we seek after him, this kind of thing, then you mm -hmm. will find. So there's kind of like, almost like this promise if you seek, but there's a certain kind of seeking. It's a seeking with all your heart. Mm. And what I found was there are, so there's these kind of seekers. There's I call them truth seekers. Mm -hmm. But then there's also references to seeking in the new testament that might surprise you like the the pharisees sought jesus but it wasn't because they were seeking to learn from him or they were seeking to kill him why mm -hmm. because he was upsetting their whole system people were going to jesus they weren't coming to them you know and so there's a sense in which they weren't truth seeking they were self-seeking you know so there's different kinds of seekers in the uh every, there's a ton there's a lot of people seeking in the new testament but not all of it's good seeking and what i find when you when you read some of these progressives it doesn't matter kind of where you want to end up it's just a matter of as long as you're on the journey as long as you're seeking as long as you're deconstructing that's what matters you know because uh, is that the idea is because as long as you're deconstructing you are moving away from this thing that we don't like I th where you end up going, that's a matter of individual choice. But as yeah. long as you don't stay where you're at, am yeah. I reading you correctly in that? Well, there it depends. Again, it depends. I think there's different people in this in this deconstructionist kind of movement, and they're going to fall. There are some who say it doesn't matter where you end up. You can end up in atheism, in agnosticism, in some other religion, in progressive Christianity. It doesn't matter. That's a certain kind of deconstructionist, okay, that I think doesn't really care about truth, okay? They're a deconstructionist well, right. more in the postmodern idea because mm -hmm. they don't care where you end up. Right. There are others, like I think the authors of this book, or at least some of the authors in this book, 
who they want you to end up in progressive Christianity. So there's a sense in which they think their new theology is true. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so it Could, seems like they care about truth, at least um, their, their truth. And I'm going to read some quotes to you and get your, get your right. thoughts. Right. Well, see, now that's, that's yeah. the issue. On the one hand, you talked about the postmodernists. They don't care where you land. And then, mm -hmm. and then you've got these people who want you to land on their truth, which is yeah. also kind of relativistically characterized there. Yeah. Um, it's, except for the consistent relativist would say, whatever whatever as, mm -hmm. as long as you it's yours it's like gender there are 50 genders now whatever yeah. what matters is what you believe inside okay mm -hmm. but there is a group of people here that are kind of saying whatever kind of but not really whatever it's our stuff that we want you to be into and not that incidentally maybe it would be helpful for our listeners just for you to give a thumbnail sketch 30 seconds or, or so yeah. of what a progressive christian is oh sure um, so a, a progressive Christian is someone who would deny historic, uh, many of the historic Christian doctrines. Um, I, I'm using the term progressive Christian, and I don't think that they're actual Christians, mm -hmm. okay? Um, because they're denying, um, I think, historic Christian beliefs. And right. some of them are central beliefs. We're not just talking about debates over the age of the earth here mm -hmm. or end time stuff. We're talking about the deity of Christ. We're talking about the exclusivity of Christ. We're talking about whether God exists or not. Some of these guys call themselves hopeful agnostics. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, we're talking about, uh, man, we're talking about encouraging certain kinds of sexual behavior that the Bible calls sin. Um, so I think that uh, these would be people who hold to a certain set of beliefs and usually the progressive Christian, you know, they, they would deny hell. Virtually all of them are universalists in some respect. Uh, they hold a certain view of sexuality that is no different from the culture's view of sexuality. They hold uh, a view of, um, what else? In, uh, some kind of inclusivism. You know, Jesus isn't the only way. All, all roads lead to The authority to of the Bible, that's out the door. You know, authority of the Bible. Church. School. Yeah, so you go through and there's just and, and you that's what the chapters in this book are are defending these new progressive views when it comes to So it it sounds to me like this is the way I kind of sum it up is that it is an, it is is maintaining the name Christian and a veneer of Christianity mm -hmm. and yet at the same time not holding to any Christian view that is in any way offensive to leftist yeah. culture. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah. I, I can't imagine anything that I know that progressives hold yeah. to be so that would in any way, shape, or form bother anyone in, a progr in the, the leftist culture, yeah. which is a progressivist culture. Yeah. So they, they're basically progressive in all their views, but mm -hmm. they've got Jesus in there somehow yeah. championing all these progressive views. And, and a great book on this is Elisa Childer's book, Another Gospel. Yeah, and that's what so. it comes down to. It is another gospel. And that's why we're, you know, not mincing our words. We're not going to pull punches. This really is another gospel. Mm -hmm. What I've realized is it's actually just the emergent church movement with a new label. As right. I read through this, and these guys are citing Rob Bell. They're citing Brian McLaren, the guys who are leading the emergent movement, which kind of, you don't hear about it anymore. And that's because it, it's wearing a new name, a new label, mm -hmm. um, a new outfit. It's, it's, it's progressive Christianity. That's what they're calling it. And it's like the CRT stuff, the critical theory, that's in this too. Um, you find that, man, if you are, if you are an oppressor, you have less access to truth. But if you are pressed, then that lived experience somehow gives you more access to, mm -hmm. to truth, whatever that is. It's funny um, you mentioned CRT because that's a thing. That acronym has gone by the wayside now because it's got such bad press. People are saying, we're not teaching CRT. We're teaching equity and inclusion mm -hmm. or yeah. EI. And then there's another word they have. There's all these other acronyms they have. But it turns out to be the same thing under a different name, mm -hmm. just like your progressive Christianity is 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 basically the postmodern crowd mm -hmm. under a new guise, same yeah. theology.